What's this? It's a bridge. So say the last part of that word, idge, idge. And we use that sound when words end A-G-E in English. Look at these examples. Message, village, garage. Do you hear? It's the idge sound that we use at the end of these words. Average, marriage, courage. I could continue. There are some exceptions, like if the word has one syllable, like page or age, and words that include those words, like teenage or homepage, but generally this rule is true. Isn't that cool? And yes, there are always exceptions, like some words that we've taken directly from French, like massage and collage, but there are more than 1,500 words that end A-G-E in English, and if you follow this rule, you'll pronounce most of them correctly. Okay, shall we have a look at how to pronounce another few thousand words correctly with just a few simple rules? Let's go. Okay, the second rule is for words that end like this, A-T-E. Now you probably pronounce words like this with the eight sound, like five, six, seven, eight, right? Well, that's not always true. I mean, it's true for one syllable words like skate and gate, but what about these words? Duplicate, associate, alternate? Well, these words can actually be pronounced in two different ways, and it all depends on whether it's a verb or a noun or adjective. And in these cases, they can be both. So the rule is quite simple. When we have verbs that end A-T-E, the pronunciation is eight, like five, six, seven, eight. Duplicate, associate, alternate. They're fine as verbs. Some other examples are activate, create, animate, debate, and accelerate. As a verb, we pronounce A-T-E like the number eight. However, when we are using adjectives or nouns that end A-T-E, the pronunciation changes from eight to it. Uh, we use the schwa sound, which is uh, uh, uh. Very short, very relaxed mouth, uh, uh, uh. And then the T sound, uh, uh, uh. So as nouns, the pronunciation of these words are duplicate and associate. Or as an adjective, the pronunciation of this is alternate, alternate. Some other examples of this are affectionate, adequate, accurate, corporate, fortunate, unfortunate, appropriate, inappropriate, and passionate. So this rule is quite simple. If it's a verb, you pronounce it eight, and if it's a noun or adjective, it ends with the sound it. Okay, the next pronunciation rule is a big one, and you can download all these rules and examples by clicking up there and getting the free worksheet from this lesson. There's also a link in the description. And rule number three is this. Can you go ch 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 Okay, imagine you have some maracas in your hand. ch 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 Do this, and that is the end of words that end T-U-R-E. Simple. So it's culture. Ch -ch -ch, ch 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 at the end. Culture. Future. Feature. Literature. Signature. And adventure. So remember the maracas? Ch ch ch. And that is the end of these words. Now with rule number four, it's important just to remember the difference between letters and sounds. When we're writing in English, we write with a combination of letters. But when we're speaking English, we don't speak letters. 
When we're speaking, we are producing a combination of sounds. Okay, so bear that in mind for this rule is that when we have the letter D, so when we write the letter D and the next sound in spoken English is either the long OO, OO, or the OR sound, then the D sounds like the J in J -j June and J -j July, June, July, J -j -j. And listen, the D sounds like a J in these words. Jew, duo, June, duplicate or duplicate, depending whether it's a verb or noun, and duplex. Okay, these all have the OO sound after the letter D. Also, jawing, durable, and duration. These all have the OR sound after the letter D, so the D sounds like a J. Okay, rule number five is quite similar, and rule number five is when words have the T, the letter T, followed by the OO sound, or the short schwa sound. Uh. Okay, so T followed by OO. YouTube. Tube. Ch ch ch. Not t t t. Not tube. Tube. Tuna. The fish. Tuna. Institution. Intuitive. Intellectual. And opportunity. Opportunity. Choo choo, like a train. Choo choo, opportunity. Okay, let's listen to this when we have the T followed by the schwa sound. Unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate. Picture, picture, picturesque, picturesque. And congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. So the T sounds like the CH in church and cheese when it's followed by the OO or B sound. Another great rule. Okay, the next rule is probably the most powerful rule. In fact, I'm going to save that until the last one and I'm going to teach you two stress related rules first. Now, stress and the stressed syllable is really, really important in English. It's equally important as using the correct sounds. Where you stress a word can really be the difference between understanding you perfectly or not understanding you at all. Just look at these words a second. Photo, photography, photographic. Do you hear? the stressed syllable is moving. That's what I mean when I talk about a stressed syllable. Okay, rule number six is this. When we have a phrasal verb, you know a phrasal verb is a verb plus a preposition, like put up, or a verb plus a preposition plus a preposition, like put up with. Well, when we have a phrasal verb, the stressed word, is the second word. And it doesn't matter if the phrasal verb has two or three words. You stress the second word. This morning I woke up at seven o'clock. I drank up my cup of tea and I set off at eight o'clock. And later I'm going to pick up my girls from school. Phrasal verbs stress the second word. Now another cool rule related to stress is with words like these. What did these words have in common? Bedroom, bookcase, football, swimming pool, apple tree, handshake, lunchtime. These are all words, all one thing, which is composed of two nouns. And when this happens in a word, or in two words, like apple tree, we stress the first noun. There are loads of words like this in English. In fact, look around you now. Look in the room where you are now, and I'm sure you will see compound nouns. So listen again to the stressed part of these words. Bedroom, bookcase, football, 
swimming pool, apple tree, handshake, lunchtime. As with all these rules, there might be some exceptions, but it's a really, really good general rule to apply if you're not sure how to correctly pronounce a word in English. Okay, now have a look around you. Write in the comments one compound noun that you can see wherever you are now, okay? In your, in your room, in your car, wherever you are watching this. Tell me what you can see. And I'm sure that almost all of these will have the stress on the first noun. Okay, I mentioned the most powerful rule that I'm going to teach you today. Are you ready? Let's have a look. Okay, so in British English, when you have a vowel sound followed by the letter R, the letter R is silent. It doesn't exist phonetically. We don't say it. We don't even think about it. It's not there. So don't do it, okay? If you want to speak clearly, don't pronounce the R after a vowel sound. It doesn't help us understand you. In fact, the opposite is true. It makes it more difficult to understand you if you pronounce the letter R in these situations. Now, there's one exception to this rule, which I will tell you about in a minute. But first, look at these examples and listen to hear if you can hear the pronunciation of the letter R. Hard, nurse, perform, 40, procedure, car, computer, here. In each case, you can see that there's absolutely no pronunciation of the letter R in those words and in millions of other words because they follow the vowel. Okay, now for the exception to this rule. The word procedure, for example, is followed by a vowel, the letter E, but it's not followed by a vowel sound. However, the procedure I performed, the next sound after the letter R is a vowel sound, I. So in this case, we pronounce the letter R to link those words together. The procedure I performed, the procedure I, I, the procedure I performed. So in those cases, yes, we pronounce the letter R. It's called the linking R because it helps us to link one word to the next. Here, silent R. Can you hear a noise? Pronounce the R because the next sound is a vowel sound. Hear a noise. Here, silent R. Hearing, pronounce the R because the next sound is a vowel sound. Right, let's now have a look at the pronunciation of this combination of letters. I'm sure you're familiar with this crazy combination of letters because that can be pronounced in eight different ways. Wow. Um, so I'm gonna teach you how to know how we pronounce that combination of letters and the correct pronunciation in many common words. And I'm gonna do that in that video there. For now, I hope you follow these eight rules that I've taught you today. And if you want to take your pronunciation a step further with me, then join me inside my daily quick fix group. There's a link and a discount for you in the description below. So I hope you can join me there. I'll see you in that video. Bye for now.